All right, I want to talk about stubby gauges and smart probes and some of the tips and tricks for using those. Um, the advantage of smart probes, I think, is obvious to everyone that's used them or thought about using them. Uh, you can basically have an entire manifold gauge packed away in your tool bag. So, you know, you're up on a roof with your meter and everything else. You don't have to go back down to the van to get your... Um, manifold if you discover it's a refrigerant issue you just have your stuff right there packed in your tool bag it's really nice um, I love these field piece probes the range on these things is unbelievable uh, I've had them up on a roof on like a, a big um, semi hermetic and then I go down down uh, in the building in a cooler and I can sit there and watch it on my phone pumping down it's just it's amazing but uh, anyways even if um, you still don't want to get into the whole smart probe thing I know a lot of guys don't like using their phone for stuff and just prefer analog stuff and I, I get that I, I like analog gauges I have a couple uh, sets of stubby gauges something like this is is super useful they're quick um, again very portable um, the advantage of these is you could you don't have to worry about having them in the rain I mean I'm sure these are water resistant but I still don't want them out in the rain uh, and with both of these things there's very little refrigerant loss so I love using these on smaller uh, refrigeration systems and things where I just I don't want to lose a lot of refrigerant every time I hook up to the system so anyways um, they're great. The main disadvantage of them is that when you have it connected, you've got to figure out how to get refrigerant into the system because, you know, if you've if you've got your your low side on the port, where are you gonna put your hose uh, to get the refrigerant in? So I, I I've been working with this over time and have a couple different iterations of how to solve that problem the first thing I think I used was just a I think these are called quick tees if you search I, I'll try to put descriptions or links in the description of you know everything that I can find but anyways this one I, I made I think they're just called quick tees but what I did was I unsoldered the end off of just a regular T, you know, that's got the brass end. And this end here is obviously you could get that off an of old hose, but I got it off a tube of leak seal. So the you know if you if you save your tubes you can you can cut them cut the ends off and then you have one of these and the other one's a quarter flare. Um but anyways, as far as getting these off, uh, don't waste your time trying to cut that collar. Just heat this up with a propane torch and this tube gets soft and you can just pull that right off. And then you're left with like a quarter barb, something like that. And uh, I, I've made all kinds of stuff out of these. So I started with the quick tee and then this was the next thing I made. And what this is is just brass uh, bar stock that is uh, inch bar stock that I cut like a little bit over a half inch wide and drilled channels in there so all of this is connected this is a fitting that yellow jacket makes and I'll try to put that in the in the description but I brazed an eighth inch NPT uh, male end onto there and then I brazed a tap onto it so you can have this connected and then you have a tap for your hose then I built this and I, I like this is my favorite of all of them it's that same yellow jacket fitting where I just brazed a tap straight onto it and let me talk a little bit about making this because it, it is tricky this is this is difficult to do <laughs> but anyways um, you want to use a grinding wheel or something um, to cut this at a particular angle and then 
you also have to cut it out so that it fits that contour almost like have to make a saddle shape out of it and then once you've got it matched up pretty well you're going to have to put it in a vise and I normally take like a quarter inch flare nut so I can clamp this and protect protect it from the vise and then you might have to put some things behind here some some little block of metal or something to give you a nice square surface to clamp on this other side but anyways you just fix it in the vise get it clamped then you're going to melt a little braise on the top and use your heat to flow it down and you're going to hit this I didn't hit this initially and I think what Yellow Jacket did was actually solder this in and not braise and the heat from brazing just it created a bunch of little pinholes as that solder vaporized so anyways you want to hit this and hit that and then if you have a problem getting this to seal uh, I think what I did you can see how there's kind of a fillet around there I actually just went and went over it with uh, stay bright 8 and just laid a fillet over that to seal it but I did that you know several years ago and it's it's been absolutely great ever since so and as far as brazing brass um, you got to use brazing flux and I really like using Harris blockade this is a um, silver free solder so it's pretty economical but it flows really really good it's way more uh, liquid than like Silphos um, and these are uh, two millimeter diameter sticks and that's that's the perfect size to me for doing uh, the kind of fine uh, brazing that's required in making some of these things you can see how well it turns out just because it flows so so well wouldn't be the best for filling holes but it is really good for brazing really fine stuff so once you've got this brazed onto here then I take obviously you know you've got the core out because you're brazing then you take a drill a bit that's small enough so you can get it in that hole then you drill your hole I wouldn't drill the hole first and then try to get this lined up on the hole just get it brazed on there then drill your hole through um, and once you drill through you might have to drill through this way to knock out the burrs that are in there but anyways this this works great it's so low profile never gets in the way and uh, you have it connected and you can just uh, I take my refrigerant jug up there and a spare hose and then I'm ready to ready to charge all right um, and then of course on on my high side gauges I use these core depressors I got a video on these but that's just that decreases your uh, refrigerant loss even more having these um, core depressors okay the last thing I want to talk about is a little hose like this now I'm not actually recommending that you make any of these things that I'm showing I'm just showing what I did obviously if you're making stuff yourself there's risk involved in in that you know you when you're working on high pressure stuff you want something made by a manufacturer so don't don't do this I'm just showing what I do kind of thing you know what I mean um, here's something else I built out of a leak tube or a leak seal tube this is one end and this is the other end of that tube and so for this one now you can buy these short hoses I don't know that I've ever seen one that had a 45 on it though I actually made that 45 you you cut it at a 45 and then line your halves up so you're at a 45 degree angle and again you can see how that blockade does as far as flowing around really nicely and this is an old old refrigerant hose piece of refrigerant hose these are collars that uh, I, I got a I got a set of crimpers and collars at a pawn shop for repairing 
acetylene hose. These are um, seven, six, nine, but you can get these at a at the same supply house that you you get your acetylene tanks refilled, like a you know not a refrigerator, not a HVAC supply house, but if you actually go to a gas uh, dealer, they should have these, or you can buy them online in the crimper. But um, normally when I make stuff like this, I throw it on a just straight with no regulator on the CO2. So I, I put about 800, 8, 850 PSI on it and uh, to test them and this thing uh, does just fine. So this does work well, but again, I'm not recommending that you, you make it, but I, I've used the heck out of it and I, I love it. So anyways, those are some just uh, things to make your life easier when using stubby gauges. I mean, I, I, I really, I've, I've kind of switched over to using stubby gauges mostly. I, I get out my manifold like when I need to do some major repair or something. But, uh, but for the most part, in my diagnostic bag, I've got my electrical diagnostic stuff, my meter, and then I've got my field piece probes. And it just works out really well. So hopefully that helps, guys.